Hi everyone, I am Sushrut Thakar, a student from IIT Bombay and also a TA for this course. Uh, in this video, we will be looking at uh, Fourier series and Fourier transform, which uh, we have learned uh, in the lectures. And it is actually very interesting to know that uh, this concept was uh, not at all developed for signal and systems. And actually it was developed while Fourier was exploring the phenomena of heat conduction, as in how heat moves from one place to another. And uh, we will also look at uh, a little bit of history, which is also very interesting. So, Fourier series uh, is a trigonometric series and uh, trigonometric series are actually very old, like uh, as old as Babylonian civilization. And uh, the in the modern times, uh, Euler and uh, Bernoulli uh, used it uh, for the problem of plucked strings and uh, analyzing that situation. But it was also criticized very much, uh, especially uh, by a great mathematician Lagrange who said that such series uh, could not represent a wide array of signals and wide array of functions uh, and were limited to only a few uh, functions. So, uh, in this background, Fourier uh, was analyzing the problem of heat conduction and uh, he developed the series while doing that and uh, it was not mathematical, uh, not at all. Uh, the mathematical work uh, was actually done by his student uh, Dirichlet. Uh, who completed it 20 years after, uh, that was in 1829. So, Fourier was going to publish his paper containing this uh, Fourier series in 1807 and it was to be reviewed by Lagrange and three other scientists uh, before publishing. Now, Lagrange was very much against it, so he did not approve it and it was not published at all. And later, he, later Fourier wrote uh, his theory in his book. So, we will see what Fourier did. So, uh, Fourier was studying the problem of heat conduction and uh, we will consider a very simple case, a 1D case. So, he was studying uh, time dependent heat conduction. Let us say we have a wall here or uh, you can say a rod 1D heat conduction and we are cooling it uh, on both sides by putting ice on it. So, T equal to 0. Actually, uh, we do not need to cool it uh, because we can anyway set uh, a temperature scale in which uh, this in which this wall temperature will be 0. So, uh, here we will put x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L for the wall thickness and we know these two boundary conditions as well as the initial temperature uh, T at uh, x comma T equal to 0. Actually, let us call uh, time uh, instead of T tau, so that we do not confuse between the variables. So, Fourier empirically formulated the equation governing this uh, by using heat balance. So, basically it is uh, balancing the heat content going out plus the change in heat, heat content of the wall. So, he got the following equation. So, he got the equation given by this uh, dou t of x comma tau uh, with respect to dou tau is equal to dou 2 t of x comma tau with respect to dou x square. So, uh, this equation has two variables, the space and the time. And uh, in differential equations, uh, we usually try to separate these variables. So, uh, there is a technique for that and uh, we will assume that the time and space part are independent and uh, we will put the following, uh, following substitution. This is T of x comma tau is equal to g of tau, the time part and r of x, the space part. So, after putting this equation and simplifying, we will get 1 by g of tau uh, d g of tau with respect to d tau. Note that uh, this is an exact differential here because g is only a function of tau, the time is equal to 1 by r of x into d 2 r of x with respect to d x square. Now, the left hand side of, the, of this equation is a function of time and the right hand side is a function of space. So, both must be equal to constants in order to uh, have this equation satisfied for all the time and for all the x values. 
So, we will put it equal to minus lambda square a constant and uh, now there are two separate equations a time equation and the space equation uh, by equating the corresponding terms. The time equation uh, is very easy to solve actually. I will just write it here and uh, by integrating once its solution can be found uh, of the form e raised to minus lambda square tau is equal to g tau. Of course, there will be a constant multiplying this and we will denote it by a and we will determine this constant later on. I will highlight this because uh, we will be using this equation later on. Uh, so, we have solved the time part. Now, now I will write the space part. Uh, it is 1 by rx uh, d2 rx with respect to dx square is equal to minus lambda square. Now, this is a very standard equation called the simple harmonic oscillator equation and uh, uh, it is known that, that uh, this equation has a solution of the type this which is c sin of lambda x plus d cos of lambda x. So, uh, we will need to determine these constants and eventually. So, uh, this is called eigen solution of this equation and uh, we will substitute now the boundary conditions which we had. The temperature at, at both ends x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L are 0. So, uh, the space part must be 0 because the temperature is 0 at any point of time. So, we will substitute r is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 as well as at x is equal to L and uh, by substituting we will get d equal to 0. Uh, you can easily see that uh, if you substitute x is equal to 0 the sign term uh, automatically goes away. Uh, also, when we substitute r is equal to 0 when x is equal to L we will get a condition on uh, what values lambda can take. So, lambda will have some discrete allowed values for which uh, this equation will be satisfied. So, uh, we have this before substituting x is equal to L and when we substitute x is equal to L um, then r becomes 0. So, we have sin lambda L equals 0. So, lambda turns out to be pi by L into some integer let us call it k where k takes the values 1, 2 so on. In general we can write any solution to this differential equation as linear combination of these solutions. So, this is property of the differential equation that you can write uh, any general solution in terms of its uh, basis solutions or eigen solutions. Let me write the complete equation involving both time and space parts and we will write it as a linear combination of the individual solutions given by individual case. Right. So, uh, here we can see we have written both the time and space parts and we can combine these constants a and c into one constant say c k to denote the constant coming out uh, from the k kth term uh, as c k. So, uh, the constants determined by different k's can be different uh, that is why we are writing c k to denote, denote the kth constant and we know the initial temperature because uh, we want to eventually determine these c k's uh, to find the temperature and uh, from initial temperature we can calculate these. Uh, we have the initial temperature as a function of x only because the time is fixed time t equal to 0. So, we can write it as so we can write it as a function of x say f x and if we substitute it above we will get summation k going from 1 to infinity c k sin of pi k x by L 
and the time part will vanish uh, because e raised to 0 will be 1. So, we have this Fourier series here, a special case indeed where all the cosine terms are vanishing and the constant is also not there. So, we solved a very simple problem here and uh, we can always go forward. We can add multiple dimensions, say solve a 2D problem or a 3D problem or add a source in between where we will have to take the uh, Fourier transform of the source as well. That is one of the methods and uh, you are encouraged to try it at home. Please post your solutions on the discussion forum. You can always look at uh, the books regarding uh, heat and mass transfer or heat conduction uh, if you want uh, to explore further. In this video, we saw how Fourier developed his Fourier series and also a little bit of history regarding that. And uh, I will see you in another video perhaps next time. Thank you for watching.